Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, we're going to be going over the new trailer that has just come out for Season 3 of Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. The new episodes have just been announced to come out on May 21st, and the tone of this arc seems to be far more horror-oriented compared to any of the Netflix story that we've seen so far. <laughs> So just a short while ago, the official Jurassic World channel released this new trailer for Camp Cretaceous. And right off the bat, many of you will no doubt have taken notice of the darker and more ominous feel that this short video has in comparison to much of what has happened already. That's not to say that Camp Cretaceous is any stranger to darker elements, with the beheading of the Cynoceratops and the dinosaur poacher kills that we saw happen in Season 2 being a good example, but so far in my opinion, the last few episodes veered more towards family entertainment in comparison to Season 1, which I thought was actually pretty close to the level of the films in some aspects. Well, now the TV PG rating seems to have come back, and the reveal of the genetic abomination that is subject E750 is taking front and center. Now, during the end of season two, many of us had several theories as to what E750 could be, and it turns out that if we take certain marketing materials seriously, that the new villain will be more along the lines of the genetic hybrids, a la the Indominus Rex and Indoraptor that we've seen in the series past. Right off the bat, this teaser showed us Isla Nublar in a very dark and moody light. Clouds are covering the sky while a pteranodon passes overhead of a wandering stegosaur. A quote, new threat has just been born and it would appear to be of a comparable size to something like a Velociraptor. This threat is shown to have broken free from Dr. Wu's secret lab, and a freaky new roar is heard echoing out over the teaser's end. Lightning strikes a tree at night, causing fire to fall from the sky, and that image gets reflected in the very Indo-like eye of this new monster. Now, after several months of watching Camp Cretaceous episodes, this is the segment that I've felt has, so far, felt the most like Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which is getting me really interested to see what direction they take it. Because that film and The Lost World, which seem to be the inspiration for season two, are the more dark and ominous entries in the series, with Fallen Kingdom obviously being the movie that showed all of us the successor to the Indominus Rex, the Indoraptor. Now, when it comes to E750, or the Scorpius Rex, as it's allegedly known, I honestly have no idea what to expect. I will say, though, that the mysteries surrounding this new animal do make for some pretty fun speculation in the realm of what we're going to be getting come May. Now, if we go off of what we factually know is canon in the Jurassic Park franchise, the Indominus Rex was killed by the end of the 2015 film. Eli Mills' men would soon come after that animal's rib bone in order to make the Indoraptor, but this genetic freak has been locked away in a deep part of Dr. Wu's lab and for some reason kept frozen in a small security device for fear of it ever getting out. And now with the dinosaur running free, I don't think anyone has any real idea of what to expect. The really cool thing about the Season 3 trailer is we don't really know much about this animal at all. All that's really been revealed is that it is allegedly some sort of hybrid that is after the Indominus Rex, yet before the Endoraptor. So my mind personally has all kinds of questions like, why wouldn't Dr. Wu want to go after this? Why did he want to create an animal completely from scratch? Is there something wrong with this? Uh, it would appear so with the dinosaur being frozen away and kept on a secret electricity-like support system that we saw in the last season. So with the Indoraptor being something of an incomplete prototype that had a lot of kinks and problems in Fallen Kingdom, what does that mean for this guy? If the Scorpius Rex does end up being some sort of very, very poor or discombobulated prototype that just Dr. Wu couldn't do anything with, we might be getting ready to see the most monstrous of these hybrids so far in the series. Which I actually do think was a smart idea to put in Camp Cretaceous, since they don't want to go that route with any of the new live-action films, which are more paleontologically focused from what Colin Trevorrow has said. Personally, I was very skeptical of the whole hybrid route, but Jurassic World really did win me over with the Indominus, and the Indoraptor and its history with the Super Raptor and everything that was going on in that film, I love it. I love that genetic aspect of Jurassic Park that 
for some reason a lot of people like to abandon, but it's there, it's a part of the story. Now, last season turned out to be pretty surprising due to the fact that Manticore, who was heavily alluded to in season one, never showed up. But since the last human casualties that we saw take place happened to be of the aforementioned dinosaur poachers, I personally think having that genetics company resurface and possibly attempt to get some resources from E750 could very well result in the inevitable killings that will go down in season three. But hey, this is all just speculation on my own behalf. May 21st is the date that these new episodes are going to drop, and since we've never heard of this thing existing in anything outside of the show, I'm extremely interested to find out what exactly is going on. But hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my in-gen executives. I'd also like to thank all of my parkers and in-gen hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing me again. See you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.